Good morning and welcome to worship here at Trinity Lutheran Church. This is Trinity To Go and I'm Pastor Mark Narum. Pastor here in downtown Bismarck, we are so glad that you have found your way to us here as we gather this day for worship. Trinity To Go is a ministry of Trinity Lutheran that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So no matter where you are, no matter what's going on in your life, you have access to worship. So, we begin our worship this day in the ninth Sunday, or the ninth week, after Pentecost. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's share together our prayer of the day. Almighty God, you sent your Holy Spirit to be life and light of your church. Open our hearts to the riches of your grace that we may be ready to receive you wherever you appear. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I've got a couple of readings that I want to share for you this day in the midst of worship. The first one comes from Genesis, the 15th chapter. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid. Abram, I am your shield. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You've given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir? But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, look toward the heaven, count the stars, if you're able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. Our gospel today comes from the gospel of Luke in the 12th chapter. We pick up in the 32nd verse. Jesus says, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action. Have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn he and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what time or what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. 1995 was the year, and at this time of year, Jan, the three boys, and I were living in Dubuque, Iowa. It was the very beginning of our seminary journey. I had just begun classes. The very first class at that time was to take summer Greek. We ate, slept, lived, breathed. Everything was all about summer Greek. Six days a week, probably 12 hours a day. There was not much family life in those days. If we weren't in class, we were doing assignments or we were flipping flip flashcards to make sure that we could learn the Greek words and the different verb structures and everything else. But once that class was over, and I survived it, thanks be to God, then we went into prologue week. The very first week was all about building community. You see, at Wartburg Seminary, community is central to the entire learning process. As a matter of fact, in the very middle of campus, between the housing and the place uh, where we went to classes, 
was a building and that building was split into two. One half of it was the chapel where every day during the week we gathered for worship in the morning. The other half of that building was the refectory or the dining hall, the place where after chapel everybody gathered around tables for coffee and conversation. Worship and community was central and community would be central to the way that we studied as well. So this first week they loaded us all off and we headed off to a Bible camp in Wisconsin, doing some classes, but also doing some team building, some getting to know you kind of stuff. We spent some time in what's called a ropes course. And the, a ropes course is basically a process of hurdles that you have to get over, but you can't get over it alone. You have to think your way through and you have to work with your group. One of those hurdles was called a trust fall. A person would get up on um, a picnic table and on the end of the table, they would stand with their back to the rest of the group. Everyone else was on the ground. Their hands were stretched out just like this. People were opposite from one another. We were groups of 10, so one up top, nine below. You had to cross your arms like this, lock your knees, the one that was up on the table, and then drop fall into their arms. Now, if you trusted them, if you locked your knees and fall straight back, nine people could easily grab you. But it was a huge ask to trust these people that you didn't know very well to catch you. The truth is, as I read through these scriptures for this week of worship, the thread that flows through all of them is the issue of trust. Think about Abram in Genesis. The issue is, does he trust that God is going to provide an heir for him? God had come to Abraham just a couple of chapters earlier. God had promised that he was going to make a great nation of Abram. And here we come into the text today and Abram is beginning to wonder. Now, we don't know how much time has passed, but an heir has not been born. Sarai is still barren. Where is the heir going to come from? And Abram cries out, what? Is it going to have to be Eliezer of Damascus, a, a slave in my household who inherits all of this? God says, no, it's going to be your own issue. God says, if you look into the sky, if you see all of the stars, well, your descendants are going to be more than that. Well, the truth is, descendants begin with the birth of one. Lord, can I trust? Can I believe that you are going to give this one to begin this great people? If you continue to read in Genesis, you'll find out that it's not an easy path. I mean, as a matter of fact, another chapter or so down in Genesis, Abram and Sarai are hatching a new plan because they're not certain that God's going to follow through. Sarai is old. Can they trust? Or is fear going to take them over? The truth is, it is trust and fear that dance back and forth in our lives. Does fear overtake us? Does fear overwhelm us? Does fear grab hold of us so that we are crippled, afraid, frightened to move forward? Or do we trust? Jesus talks with those around him this day and says, it's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Have no fear, little flock. Oh, fear can come screaming into our lives. Fear about our health, fear about our kids, fear about our jobs, fear about you name it. Is it any question, any reason why anxiety is so high these days? Why more and more kids, more and more adults are dealing with issues of anxiety. We have access to so much more in this modern world. We can find news from around the world. We can open a newspaper that can take us anywhere and tell us about drought and famine and murder and chaos and flooding and, and, and fear begins to set in. 
It's the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. See, here's the truth. Jesus Christ died and rose again, giving the gift of life to you. We get what's called the happy exchange. We get to turn our sin over to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who for Jesus' sake forgives us. Jesus dies. We get our sins forgiven. It's the happy exchange. The question is, can we trust? Can we believe? Can we hold firm to the fact that God is providing this for you, for me? This is the gift that is given this day for you and for all. Thanks be to God. Amen. Well, on this day, let's gather together in a word of prayer, trusting that God hears us, trusting that God is at work. Holy God, we give you thanks for this day, for all that comes from your hand. Lord, help us to remember that everything we have comes from you. We want to grab hold of it. We want to claim it as our very own. But Lord, help us remember it's a gift from you. Help us to take those gifts and use it for the sake of others, not to hoard it unto ourselves. Lord, this day we pray. We pray for friends and family who are hurting, who are in need of your help, your love, your grace, or your mercy. Especially this day, Lord, we pray for Don and Mike, Tom and Cheryl, Annette, Linda and Terry, Louise, Doug, Mark, Kitty, Lori, Henry, Jan, and Michael. Lord, there's a bunch of other people in our lives. We lift them silently to you now. Lord, we pray for this world, trusting that you are at work. Help us to know that you've got it. You've got it in your hand, and you'll take care of all. We lift this in Jesus' name. I invite you to join me as together we pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, great to have you with us. I'm going to put an address up. If... uh, We're so thankful for all of the gifts, the offering, the tithes that you send in to help support the ministry of Trinity Lutheran Church. It allows us to come to you in this way. It allows us to do outreach and Christian education and Sunday school and confirmation and so much more. So thank you. Thank you so much. If there is a way that we can walk with you in your faith journey, call us at the church. We would love to chat. If there is a need for prayer, if there is a need for anything else, call us. Let us see what we can do together. It is so important that we are brothers and sisters in Christ together, community, walking together in this world. If you find this helpful, Tell friends and neighbors about them. Let them know how they can find this ministry on Facebook or on YouTube. And if you are in Bismarck sometime, stop by. Come worship with us. We would love to welcome you. It doesn't matter who you are. doesn't matter where you've been. doesn't matter what you're wearing or anything else. Just come. Come. Be present with us. Receive this blessing this day. Now may God, our Father, our Lord, our Creator, walk with you this day and every day, blessing you and keeping you. We lift this all in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. It was great to worship with you today. Blessings to you. Amen.